There's a lot of, of, of talking about Paul Heyman and being a big uh, a supporter of yours. Because yep. I think at that point in time, he actually might have been booking the show. He but was. either way, Paul was very much backing you into yep. becoming a very major player. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Um, since day one, me and Paul have meshed. Mm. I love that man. Mm. I have so much love for that man. He's always been really good to me. He's been um, blunt with me, which I appreciate. I appreciate people being blunt with me. I don't like to dance around subjects. Yeah. Just tell me how it is. Especially in this business. 100%. Yes, especially in this mm. business. Paul had big ideas with not just me, but with a, with you know a lot of younger people, like Buddy Murphy was mm. being one of them as well. He once told me that he had one night of control. That was the first night he was on. He had one night. That was it. Yeah. Gotcha. And after that, Everything became a fight, and everything became, you know, yeah. well, maybe a fight is not the right word, but everything a debate. became a debate. Yes, and which which I can understand, you know, but sometimes it makes you wonder. And I let that go of what what, what could be because we were fighting tooth and nail to get me out the room because the room needed to progress because it was the same thing week in week out, and the promos, be in my opinion, became more and more vague. Oh, you were doing your yes. stuff where you, you were yes. in the room asking yes. someone to knock on your door yes, or something. Exactly, right, right, right. and you know. That ran for a little bit and people started, you know, it, it came, but as it was, as it was supposed to transition to something else, it didn't. So it kind of went back down because yeah. we wanted to get it to one point and then completely switch it up. Yeah. Because that's how you do it. That's how you progress. Right. You have to go to the next level. And this had, in my opinion, had shelf life. Mm. And I think Paul felt it had shelf life too. And we just wanted to progress, but the progression was just never approved. The yeah. progression just never came. And eventually I became just lost in a shovel. Mm. And because the progression, because the discussion wasn't had, and when the discussion was tried to be coined, it never went anywhere, no matter how many times I knocked on the door and tried to sit down and like explain and like, look, we gotta do something. It was always like, no, 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 look, you know, we're good here for now. And I'm like, no, we, we need, need to, to feel the momentum. I, exactly. Because you know, when you're in when you're in the business some for so long, you feel when it's time to like shift the dynamic. Sure. You know, I feel that's how you've been able to reinvent yourself so many times because you knew, all right, I can I can take this still here. Now I gotta switch it up. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's how I felt. Like, all right, now we gotta do something new. And I generally thought that after the Buddy Murphy thing, here we go. And then it was right back in the room. And I was like, ah, that was the wrong move. Because yeah. we had momentum. We had steam. Buddy went with Seth. Because you did a feud with Buddy? Yes. Gotcha. Me and Buddy had a, well, a little mini feud. Yeah. Like, basically cool what, 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 what he wanted to do, he's like, I want to set something up between you and Buddy that we can come back on WrestleMania in three, four years, maybe five years down the line, where, you know, we lay a foundation Still now. Here, yeah. Exactly. And then five years from now, we circle back around it, but we make it bigger. We put it on a bigger stage and we can draw from, you know, what you guys did there. And, you know, it writes itself because right. that's how wrestling is done, right? You plant some seeds, a couple of years down the line, you pay it off because that's that's the beauty of what we do. We don't have to immediately like grab grab a shovel and like dig mm-hmm. it right back up. We can We can let it sit for a while, but it just never went there. I never really felt that I transcended despite what you know the promises were what the words were and you know like at one point you feel like you've thrown everything into the wall which i did and um you know the rest is history and like i'm very thankful for my time mm-hmm. i'm very very thankful to hunter and it's very thankful to vince uh Do you think vince just didn't understand this character or was it was it maybe a and here's what you always have to think of too was it was it a power play with paul or it's like okay well Paul, I'm going to teach you a lesson. You know what I mean? I think he's done that with Hunter a few times with NXT guys. Sure. We know that for sure. Yeah. Since day one, Vince was always very fun of me. Yeah. I've I've had good conversation always. But I definitely think that there was a moment where, where, where Vince was like, I don't know what to do with this guy. Mm. And every time I tried to say, oh, well, why don't we do this? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I think, Option. yes, I think Vince was very keen on figuring it out himself. But... I think he never did. And I think that is kind of what put the nail in the coffin. Mm. And then when we did the uh, the Dark Father vignettes, which he approved, which he loved. This, this is when you were gone for a while, right? You were yes. off for six I, months. Or I whatever. was only supposed to be off for like six, six weeks to, uh, to eight weeks. I was supposed to come back with Rumble. You know, with this Dark. 